Manor Weekly. I'm Susie Taylor. And I'm Luke Wilkins. And here we are at PH Motorcycles in Crawley. And guess what, my friends? The sun is out. Yes. Whoop, whoop. British summertime <laughs> has finally arrived, which is only good news for us bikers. And as always, we're going to bring you the best stuff from bikechannel.com. Right, so coming up on this week's show. We send Ali from Fast Bikes down to Brands Hatch, where he gets one hell of a surprise. I take delivery of my super cool Zenmoto Tommy 125, a more affordable version of the Lamberettas and Vespas of this world. Hey, that may be cool, but it's not quite the £16,000 Harley Fatboy special I've been riding all week. I'll let you know what I think of this rather special machine. We check out Dionysi's 2011 Leathers range. And finally, I head down to London City Dockland Arena to hang out with Chris Burke and Nate Adams and find out a little bit more about the sport of extreme freestyling. Okay, first of all, Luke, have you had another haircut? Don't be silly, that would be really pretentious and, and, and not very macho of me. And I'm a macho manly man biker, so oh. no, I haven't. It just, it's the light. Um, it looks different. Anyway, we've got lots of cool stuff coming up in today's show, including Ali from Fast Bikes. Now, we sent him down to Brands Hatch with an absolute track tool, the BMW S1000RR. Now, the plan was he was going to go there, put in some track times, have some fun, and just generally muck about. It didn't go quite to plan, though, did it? Well, no, because when he got down there, some geezer decided to challenge him for a race, and what happened, well, the outcome, was just one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Let's check it out. Hello Fast Bikes, we're here with Bike Channel at Brands Hatch, glorious day. We're here to test the BMW S1000RR, uh, 2010 Fast Bike Sports Bike of the Year. Um, need we say more, 180, 180 horsepower at the rear wheel standard, bog standard, 180 kilos, uh, fastest in most at the moment. Race, White boy in his GTR. Look who it is, Craig Curry. Hi, are you all right? How you doing, mate? Not bad. Good, thank you. So, you want to race then? Yeah, I think um, I'm ready for a race. I'll, uh, what's that? This is a BMW S1000 double R. It's only got half the wheels I've got. Yeah, it's got half 100, the power. 180 horsepower, 180 kilos, 12 and a half grand, mate. Let's talk spec for yours then. 60 grand. <sighs> Safer. A lot of car. Best car on the road for 60 grand. 470 brake horsepower, not 63 and a half seconds. But it's a right bus, isn't it? How much does that weigh? 1.8 tonnes. It's not a bus. It's fast. It's stable. It brakes. It corners. Best car on the road. Let's go driving. Ciao. No. You bikers, moped riders, taking all the boom boom all this all over the road. Not happening this time. Close, but I think the car. There's a lot of curves here, so the bike's going to be leaning over, and he's not going to be able to get on the power so easy. Uh, I'm going to go with the car. Definitely the car. The bike. Why? Um, it'll have a quick speed on the top straight, bottom straight. Initial thoughts. I'm going to try and waste him.
So I come to the end of the day, um, well, it's been pretty close. I must admit, when they rolled it out uh, and Craig went out there initially, and he was doing 53 straight away, I thought this is going to be tricky. Initially, we were going to use the whole GP circuit and I was confident the bike down the straights and the sweeping corners would have the edge, um, particularly with BMW's traction control. Um, but as it is, we end up using the Indy circuit and although there's not a lot of straights, the bike did edge it uh, by quite a bit. Thanks to its lightness, thanks to 180 horsepower, uh, and she is a big old girl, uh, 1.8 tons. But you know, 430 horsepower. Again, it was going to be close. In the end, the, the bike did a 52.1, and the car did a 53.7. So it's 1.6 seconds. Not a lot, really, when you consider it. But at the end of the day, I had no choice. I had to beat the car, or I wouldn't be going that office. Trust me. All it has to me to say is big thank you to Bike Channel. Thanks for coming out and uh, helping us. Obviously a big thank you to Nissan for the, uh, the, the loan of the car and a massive thank you to Craig Curry um, who obviously is driving all day um, and sliding and leaving big darkies through, uh, throughout Brown's Hatch. I see what you mean Luke, that was so cool. Was it just me or was Ali teasing the Nissan a little bit? Yeah, towards the end I think when he let it pass and was putting the wheelies down straight there, there was no doubt in my mind he was having a bit of a show off. But what a result, and this is fact man, on race tyres, both car and bike got to do lap times without the other one there as well. And the bike was 1.6 seconds quicker a lap. And that's in the Indy circuit. If they'd have gone the full GB circuit, probably about three seconds Ali reckons. And I tell you what, the guy in the car, he's not a muck around driver either. He actually races for Nissan. So ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Bikes are better than cars, no matter what anyone else says. You're a little bit aggressive, Ali. Sorry, I'm just proud of my <laughs> bikes, yeah, and I'll tell you what, Ali can ride as well. So well done, Ali. Good work, mate. We'll see you next week. And uh, enough of the track shenanigans, though, because you took delivery of an absolute beast of a machine this week, yes, didn't you? Yes, yes. Don't be jealous, Superbike fans. I took delivery of my Tommy 125, 800 pounds worth of pure grunt. And you know how much I love a grunter. This thing looks incredible if you're into your Lambrettas and Vespas. It's a real cheap alternative, so uh, should we check out what you thought of it? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so here I am doing my first review for Bike Channel. Now, obviously, I want everyone to take me seriously, so I chose a big beast of a bike to do my first bike review on. And here it is, the Lexmoto Tommy125. <laughs> such a lovely evening I've come up to Epsom Downs on my Tommy which let's be honest is a bit of a Chinese ripoff of Vespers and Lambrettas but look at it 800 pounds bargain one of the main reasons that you'll buy a bike like this is because of the way it looks it's very fashionable it's very retro it's on trend in fact someone's just told me they think it looks half Harley half Vespa what I love about it is the amount of chrome. You've got chrome handlebars, you've got chrome bumpers, you've got a chrome rack. But what I do wonder is how long will this Chinese chrome last? So what's it like to ride, I hear you ask? Well, it's a 125 four-stroke single-cylinder engine with 11 brake horsepower, which means it's pretty quick around town, quick off the lights, and I've reached speeds of 55 miles per hour. Not up a hill though, just on a straight. In terms of handling, to be honest, it has exceeded my expectations. However, I feel like you've got to turn more into corners than I have done on other scooters. Um, but I think that's just because of the curved handlebars. What is good though, low center of gravity. You've got the fuel tank down here, so that helps with balance as well. Brakes, oh, I don't find them that good to be honest, but I've only done 85 miles, so I'm still bedding them in. We'll give them a chance. I think a plus point for the Tommy is that it's great for pillions. I've actually um, had a six foot two bloke on the back of this and the handling was absolutely fine. Um, I couldn't even feel him. But the only thing is that um, when you're turning corners, the handlebars actually do hit your pillion in the knee. But you know, if they're annoying you a little bit, you've actually could do it a little bit harder. <laughs> right, now you may have noticed that I'm a girl. Yes, I am. Uh, I carry a lot of things with me. I need a lot of storage space. And this is where 
the Tommy is let down a little bit. There's hardly any room. I've got my bag in here, Luke's hairbrush, which is full of hair, look. Um, and the lock, and that's pretty much all you can get in there, so definitely a down point for me. I guess you could put a top box on the back, but um, I've been told that with the pillion backrest there, you're actually not gonna be able to fit one on, so not very good. Now finally, it's difficult to find any differences on paper between the Tommy 125 and the Vespa LX125, except that the Vespa is £2,000 more than the Tommy. So if you can live without the badge and the kudos of riding a Vespa, then this is fantastic value for money. And I should know, I spent £800 of my hard-earned cash on this, but will it stand the test of time? Watch this space. <music> I've just got back from a lovely ride out on the Tommy. I've told you what I think about it, but I just want to say thank you to Art Deans of Swindon and BMG Scooters in Richmond. So then, preconceptions aside, and I'm not going to lie, I thought that was going to be absolutely rubbish. Um, it looked like you had a lot of fun on that bike. Do you know what? It costs between eight to nine hundred pounds on the road. Yeah. So I think it's important that your expectations aren't that high. And then it can only supersede them. Yeah. Supersede, is that supersede, the right word? I like that. Supersede. supersede. That's a big word. I think I've got one, it's three syllables. I know, exactly. And you know what? It is so much fun. And if you think about it practically, eight, nine hundred pounds on the road, CBT tax and your gear and your lid and stuff like that, 120 miles to the gallon, it'll do 60 odd miles per hour. You're going to nip about in town. Do you need anything more? Affordable. Very affordable. Yeah, practical is the key word there. And we like practical. And you look rather snazzy too. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, not that good. Um, but if you've got more than 800 pounds to spend, Billy really big balls here. <laughs> 16,000 pounds, then you might be dreaming of getting a Harley Davidson. And one of the top Harley Davidson mark eyes is the Fat Boy Special. I got to spend a whole week on this bike, and let's be honest, most people who want to get into biking, this is what they dream of. So let's find out what I thought of it. Welcome to Harley Davidson in Guildford, where we've been out and about on this, the Fat Boy Special, and we thought we'd stop off here as a very apt place to tell you what we think of this rather sexy and amazing looking machine. Okay, so first up, what's a Fatboy special? Well, it's pretty much a standard Harley Davidson at Fatboy, but with a few cosmetic changes. Like you can see, the solid black front wheel, you've got engine casings coated in matte black paint, also the exhaust. It generally just looks a little bit meaner, and a little bit cooler, if you ask me. Price-wise, it comes in at £15,865, just under 16 grand for this beast, which isn't that much more than the normal Fatboy. In fact, I think it's only a couple of hundred extra quid more. And uh, for that, well, you're getting a hell of a piece of equipment. It does seem a huge amount of money, though, when you compare it to modern-day rivals like the Victory Hammer S, which is 14 and a half grand, and the Triumph Thunderbird Storm, which comes in, what, just under £13,000. But, of course, one of the reasons you're paying that much more is it has got that on the tank. And I can tell you all the little cosmetic things about this bike do add up. If you look at the engine casing, you can see the silver and chrome effects on so many of the little parts, and it just looks spectacular. And do you know what? I ride probably some of the most exotic bikes in the world, but nothing ever garners the same attention as a Harley Davidson. I went to a pub the other day, literally went inside for five minutes for a coffee, I'd like to add, and when I came out there were eight guys standing around having a cigarette, all looking at the bike, all wanting to know all about it. None of them bikers, but everyone knowing that badge on the tank and everyone wanting to get a piece of it if they can. The bike itself or well, the engine is a 1584 uh, V-twin which hasn't really changed much in what, about 60, 70 years. They've been making additions to it uh, every now and again. It produces 65 brake horsepower but it's not really about top end power in a Harley, it's more about the torque. This has got 89 pound per foot of torque which isn't exactly going to rip your head off like something like the Victory Hammer or maybe the Triumph Thunderbird or the Thunderbird Storm but delivers a real solid performance should we say that you know we'll keep you chugging along at 50 miles an hour we'll get you up to kind of 90 to 100 if you really want to but without any fairings on without a screen on you don't want to go much faster than that and hey it's a harley it was designed to be ridden at 30 to 50 miles an hour with you having some tassels coming off the back and enjoying the view and the scenery 
You might sound surprised that it's actually a Harley Davidson I really enjoy riding. I know in the past I have criticised some Harleys because of the fact I think that they're much more style over substance. With a big chunky front tyre that you get on this and a big back tyre, it does actually handle quite nicely. You haven't got a lot of clearance though. I've been scraping my pegs literally just turning out of roads nearly every single time. Brakes are better, better than most Harleys, still I'm not you know, not that convinced. I think that they could upgrade them. And um, personally, I think it's something when you're riding a 313 kilogram bike, you want to have a bit more confidence in. But as an actual kind of ride experience, it's pretty spectacular. It's so comfortable. It's like riding an armchair. It absorbs all the speed bumps, the potholes. And we've had so many of those since it snowed over the winter. And it does make you feel really, really special. So overall, this is definitely one of my favorite Harley Davidsons. I'm a big fan of the Fat Bob. I'm a big fan of the Fat Boys. And I think this one looks a little bit nicer than the standard Fat Boy. Depends which one you want to go for, the chrome or the matte black finish. I'm a rocker or a metaler, so the matte black to me always comes out on top. My thing is this, look, it's 16,000 pounds roughly. After that, you're gonna wanna spend at least a grand on a good set of exhaust on it. So you're looking at about 17 grand for a bike that, while spectacular looking and really nice to ride, is actually technologically and I suppose in the day, modern day terms of bikes behind a lot of its competitors. People don't care about that. Buying a Harley is a lifestyle choice. It's not something you go and do with a rational brain on because spending 16, 17 grand on a bike that let's be honest can be outperformed and has, doesn't have as probably good and as modern components as a bike that will cost you 12 and a half, 13 grand isn't common sense, but these bikes are all about passion. If you've ever wanted to ride a mountain bike, most people start off thinking, seeing Holly Davidson as a kid and seeing that that's what they want to do. So many people I know who buy Hollies have never ridden anything else because they're not interested in it. And you know, with the accessories and the customizations you can get with it, with the clubs that everyone joins when you ride Holly Davidson's and going to bike meets and stuff, there is nothing like them. So in other words, I do really, really like the bike. I do think obviously that it is a little bit too expensive compared to its more modern European and even say the Victory and American rival, but, you know what? You get that badge on the tank and you get a grin on the side of your face that you probably wouldn't get on any other machine. And more than that, you get the feeling knowing that you're riding a Harley Davidson. So in other words, thebikechannel.com. I'm giving the Fat Boy Special a bit of a thumbs up. Still think it's a bit too expensive, but if you've got the money, money no object to you, and you don't have to worry about common sense practicality, then my goodness, go get yourself one of these and uh, I think you're going to fall in love with it. too many mixed messages. Do you like it or not? How am I giving mixed messages to you? It's a <laughs> thumbs up. Uh, no, uh, it's really tricky, man. Harleys are the bikes that so many people dream of, and they really, really are, and so many people are so passionate about it. While we were there at Harley Davidson Guildford, I got collared by two really cool guys who were mad into their Harleys, and just lectured me for half an hour about saying, you know, how can you say there are better bikes out there? It's one of those things. If you want to buy a Harley, you're going to buy a Harley. You know, it's the badge, it's the image, it's everything. If you're not bothered about the badge, and you just want to look at bikes, so for a little bit less, probably better bikes, you don't have to do anything to, then you know, Triumph Thunderbird, Storm, Victory Hammer S, you've got to go for it. The Triumph Thunderbird Storm comes in at under 12 grand now, for crying out loud. And the Victory Hammer S is it's just one over there, it's one of my favourite bikes ever, hell of a machine. But, saying that, you can't customise them like you can the Harley, and the Harley, that's why people love them. You know, you can tune them, you can add separate twiddly bits to it, you can do whatever Ooh, you want. Bits. And if you wear those dangly bits on your jackets, you look really cool to them. So, I loved it, absolutely did, but I'm a bike reviewer, practical, believe it or not, I am a bike reviewer. Practical, there's that word again, <laughs> practical. practical. <laughs> Practicality says, sod it and go by the Tommy 125. Okay, next up, we went to Moto Direct to check out the 2011 Dineasy Leathers Range. Welcome to Moto Direct headquarters here in Derbyshire. Today, we're here to check out the brand new launch of the 2011 range of Dineasy in an AGV motorcycle leathers and product clothing range. Right, with me then I have Nigel Bosworth, uh, UK brand manager for Dineasy, and we've seen a presentation today of all your incredible new line of 2011 uh, motorcycle clothing range. Yep. 
But I've got you here, Nigel, because I want you to talk us through some of what you think will be the key products uh, for the UK market this year. Okay, no worries. Thanks for this time. Um, no worries. Right, what we, uh, I guess, uh, our intro, uh, sorry, our, our top level suit this year is the Abro suit, which is, um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a new, it's been tailored a lot different. And in the past, um, what, what we've done really basically is, is to, to increase the, um, the, the leather protection on the front here, whereas yes. in the past, to get a comfort fit, yep. you used to have to have just a stretchy pad. Mm -hmm. Got the got the um, co injection safety protection on, on the on the arms. This is again, this is a new t this is a painted um, Denizy uh, part. Uh, since they introduced that to my GP, which is yeah. probably ten years now, we've had four, five broken collarbones. Which is a lot less because if it grips, yeah, that's yeah. all the pressure that's goes when, to the collarbone. Yeah, I've done exactly, that playing yeah. rugby, and you know, obviously not on, on the bike. Or thing. Yeah. I know how painful it can be, and I know that it is when you make the impact and it can't move. Exactly. So that's exactly. Yeah. Oh, so that's just allowing it to stop yeah, it so gripping, so you're not so you're sliding, pressure on that. Yeah, okay, exactly. cool. So, so that's the Evro. That's your yeah. top of the range top racing suit. suit. How much yeah. does that come in at? That comes in at nine five eight. So that's not bad. a range yeah, of colours and everything. Yeah, you're choosing got, personalizing. Yeah, six, six different colours, having personalised, etc. So we've looked at race suits, an entry level suit. How about protecting my feet and ankles, Nigel? Right, okay, we've got the uh, brand new boot on yep. the market, it's called the, the Torque Torque Pro Out. Okay. The Out stands for that it goes outside your leathers. Uh huh. Because you can get in once, right. can't you? Yeah, the okay. The Torque Pro uh, In, mm -hmm. which goes inside the leathers. So. Um, but this one uh, is uh, one of our high end spec boots, it's ma mainly uh, for sports, sports bike users. Yeah. We have uh, a number of key features on this. We have, for example, the, the titanium slider, toe yeah. slider protection, the titanium uh, heel. And um, the back of the heel as well. It's a, a Lorica uh, um, material on the, on the top of the boot. We have the. It's light as well. Yeah, isn't it? very light boot. Yeah, it's, uh, we have the uh, impact resistant heel, so that's like a shock absorber. Okay, and you've also got that. I see that you've got the double print there. One yeah. for so you can put your feet in the pegs, and one so you actually push the bike backwards. Yeah, I like that, man. Because how often do you get stuck in the yeah, wet yeah, trying yeah. to move your bike, and you're like, that is never going to happen. Uh, the downside, a lot of people say, to having a zip at the back is that uh, a lot of people have fat calves. Yeah, they can't quite get them over. So not me, minus felt. I'd like to point out, I haven't got cankles. <laughs> <laughs> so what we do, we put the adjustment on it there. Oh, sweet. So, yes, yeah. even if you've got like massive, incredible Hulk yeah, size yeah. cards, you can pretty much squeeze That's them in. It, yeah, and then you adjust it, and then off you go. Sweet. So, so it's quick and easy to get into the boot as yeah. well. And uh, I say, it's still, still safety always in mind. Right. That's 259. 259 for the torque out. Torque out. So, then let's have a look at some gloves. What have you got here, Nigel? Right, this is our top glove. It's called okay. the Full Metal Pro. Yeah. Uh, it's been uh, developed by uh, a guy called Valentino Rossi. I've heard of him yeah, somewhere. He's yeah, something he to do with bikes, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Italian, something to yeah, ties in nicely. It's pretty useful bloke. We have a carbon fibre moulding, and on the back of that we have titanium. Does it pretty cool, that. Which looks well cool. Yeah, it does. And that is obviously very safe as well. Yeah, it's not just for course, looks it's cool. not just for looking good, no. And then uh, we also have a carbon uh, protection on the, on the knuckle. Yeah. And then on the joints as well we have the carbon. So... Uh, again, uh, double safe because the high points are the ones that do get the, 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 the most abuse when you yeah, get the it It's it's a two two hundred and twenty pound glove. Yeah. Uh, but you're paying for you know your hands. Valentino are Rossi's on. personal yeah, design yeah. glove. No, it's it's, uh, say manufacturing time is is a, is a long time to, to, to produce. To it. make one of those, yeah. Thank you so much, Nigel. It's been it's a pleasure. brilliant day. Actually, it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I've cool. even learned things, as you can see from my bonus point getting. Yeah. yeah. And uh, these are the things you need to look out for at your local Dainese stockist. Well, that was really interesting. You're such a geek, aren't you? You love it. I'm not going to lie. I do like to geek out a little bit, and uh, yeah, you know, I thought it was important that our viewers got to know every nook and cranny about the new Dainese 2011 levers range. And you know, I thought I delivered on that promise. Definitely. Geektastic. I'm not a loser. Honest. 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 <laughs> anyway, let's move on to something that I'm really good at now. Um, I don't know if you know, but I'm actually a world champion extreme freestyler really and motocross. Good at? And I rode motocross for ten years. No, you didn't. That was me. Oh right. You know that that was you that was a motocross <laughs> rider for ten years. I'm rubbish in motocross. I did it once about a year ago and fell off many, many times. But I managed to blag the bosses of bike channel and tell them that I was really, really good and that they should send me down to meet some people to uh, talk about extreme freestyling. And you did make a little bit of a tip of yourself, didn't you? Make a tip of myself. That's a bit. That's so we should do impressions. Go on. <laughs> That's a good one. You didn't actually do me falling over. It's more of a... <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, I did make a complete tea out of myself um, uh, in front of some really cool people as well. But I did get to speak to two people who know a lot about extreme freestyling, and here's what happened. Right, Chris Birch, UK number one freestyler. That's one of the reasons 
Maguire, man. This is insane. We are here in central London in the Docklands. You just don't really see this kind of stuff going on every day. City airport's over there, as you can tell. With the now, these guys are putting off some of the gnarliest stunts I've ever seen. You would not catch me doing that. <laughs> So I've managed to corner here in the kind of relaxation area uh, with some nice branding in the background, which we quite like. Product placement's always good. Uh, Chris Birch, the uh, UK's number one extreme freestyler fella. Um, nice to have you here. Good to be here. Now, we, the whole reason we're here is obviously we've got the Monster Extreme Freestylers Tour coming to UK, coming to Cardiff uh, in July, and you're going to be taking part in that. Um, just tell, a little, tell people a little bit about what exactly extreme freestyle kind of riding is. Right, uh, well the free freestyle riding is, is just uh, guys expressing themselves, riding, doing something they love, riding dirt bikes really. Yeah. Um, over the years it's picked up from just riding in fields and deserts, uh, mainly in California, just free riding in general, you know, hill, hill climbs, everything. And now we've got ramps, big jumps to do and you know, a lot of people, or some people have learnt tricks to do and perform in front of big crowds and that's exactly what we're going to be doing for uh, the Monster Energy uh, Extreme Freestylers. I think it's awesome, you've taken a sport that was pretty much insane as it was motocross and then made it more insane, uh, which to me is just genius, to be fair. I mean, I've seen some of the videos of you and Nate, obviously Adams, going about what you do and we're talking 80 foot air, hanging off the bike, Superman leaps, you know, everything really, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't describe the feeling or anything, but it, it's definitely one of freedom and uh, I love doing what I do, I wouldn't change it for the world, so... Um, now listen, how did you, I mean obviously you came from motocross, didn't you? How did you kind of get into it? Because a lot of people out there are going to be saying, stream freestyle, it looks insane, surely it's got to hurt just to start doing it because you're going to fall off, H how do you learn? Well first you need to be like an accomplished motocross rider or you need to know how to handle the bike, you know, I don't advise anyone to try this at home, like, that can't even ride a yeah. mo motocross... Don't try it anywhere, not just at home, not in the garden. <laughs> But um, basically, they, I had a few years' experience uh, racing motocross and just turned more into jumping. I got lucky. Uh, there was a team based around my area that was uh, performing shows, county shows, royal shows all over the UK. They needed more riders, so I went for a trial. This is when I was 15. And. Uh, Got in, they saw potential, and it just built from there. Listen, Chris, brilliant chatting to you, fella. Uh, have a brilliant day, and I'll be down there watching you perform, mate. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, so I've got all my official freestyle motocross gear on, and I'm ready to go out on track now, spend some time with Dylan, the instructor. Just have some fun, but we're riding a nice little 124-stroke bike, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to it. See how many times I come off track and crash, because last time I did motocross, it was every single lap, so it should be interesting. That's off road, baby.
I broke it. I broke it. So here we are then with the legend is Nate Adams fella. Absolute pleasure, my friend, yeah? Thank you, thank it's great you. to have you here. Now, I've just been out on track, and uh, I only did one and a half laps where I, A, broke the bike, and B, I think lost about four stone uh, in, st in sweat and everything. <laughs> I've seen what you do, man. I've seen all the YouTube videos. It is unbelievable, and I thought I was a good rider. I couldn't even do a tabletop out there. How do you do extreme freestyling <laughs> like you do, man? I don't know. I, I think um, I've just been doing it since I was young. Started riding when I was eight. Got into freestyle about 14, when I was about 14, and then... Uh, Man, I just um, got into competition series. I just start, I started competing when I was 15, so I think I started to get the hang of it early. And yeah. and uh, it's, it was my dream to be a professional dirt bike rider. So I, once I got it, I just I just stayed strong and focused and concentrated, and still and still am. So I'm just still working. I always want to be a better rider. So I think yeah. that's how you do it. <laughs> now listen, it's one thing running around in a motocross track doing your dirt biking. Where did you suddenly come up with the idea of doing this extreme freestyling stuff? Being Travis Pastrana in the process, my friend. Do you know what I mean? You're, Pretty damn good at it. Um, when, when, you know, when did you suddenly think, oh, instead of going around a circuit, oh, I'm just going to do ridiculous 100 foot jumps and things like that? Um, it's actually the decision was quite easy. I actually was watching Travis at X Games and on videos and stuff. And when I found out he was, you know, my age, just a couple months older, I was like, holy moly, I, I think I could do that. And then uh, that was about the time that. Uh, Free riding videos, freestyle videos were very big in the in the late mid '90s, and yeah. I just you know would save up money, buy videos, and watch them, and just study. And then and that's just kind of what I wasn't very good at motocross racing, and I was kind of picking up freestyle good, so it was the really easy decision. <laughs> Mate, absolute pleasure chatting to you. And um, do you want me to give you some pointers on uh, the yeah, tabletop? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's let's go do that now. Yeah, I'll show, I'll show you how to ruin a bike in one lap, okay? <laughs> It wasn't that bad. You right? were terrible. It wasn't that bad. Absolutely I just happened, terrible. I didn't want to show uh, Chris Birch and Nate Adams up, all right? Because if I really unleashed my full motor across an extreme freestyle talent, they'd have felt like pathetic Threatened. and small. Yeah, exactly. And you know, I'm, I'm, I like those guys. They were top, top blokes. Spent a lot of time on that day, and I think that you know, I showed my skills on a motocross track. Okay. The bike was tiny, and the brakes weren't working, and the, the balances was wrong, and the gear was everything was wrong. Wind, high wind, really Very bad, wind, blowing across yeah. the track. And it, I did two, two movie the track there's too much all right Whatever, from now on I'm, I'm leaving the motocross stuff to you is that all right yeah fine cool i'll do the track stuff actually you're probably better that too but no, i'll do the track stuff you do the motocross stuff but um <laughs> it was wicked thanks to nate adams and to chris birch for spending the day with us down at london uh, docklands look cool doesn't it yeah definitely yeah they were amazing so competition time Right then, here at Bike Channel, we've managed to blag five sets of tyres from Pirelli for any bike that you may own, and you can win them by answering this simple question. Who was the 2010 World Superbike Champion? Send your answers in to comp at bikechannel.com and we'll pick five of the correct answers at random and you'll get yourself a set of tyres. And also, along with your answer, don't forget to tell us what bike you've got and what type of tyres you need. That's all we've got time for in this week's show, unfortunately. It's been fun. Oh, it's been fun. Yeah, oh, she's all beating up. Look, I've got bruises and everything. Abuse from Susie. Thank you so much to P&H Motorcycles of Crawley for their great hospitality, as, as always. As always, yep. And if you want to see any of the clips in full, just go to bikechannel.com. And of course, we want your feedback on this show. If you've got any challenges you want to see us do, any bikes you'd like to see us review, absolutely anything, just follow us. Add us on facebook.com forward slash bike channel and let us know or at bike channel on Twitter. And now time for a sneaky little preview of what we've got coming up on next week's show. We'll be coming live from the UK's biggest biking and music festival, the Bulldog Bash 2011. And we'll be putting Dane Kelly Holmes through her paces when she does her CVT. If that wasn't enough, I'll be checking out the absolutely insane supermoto, the KPN SMC 6 And finally, Fast Bikes take part in the No Budget Cup and we'll be there to see how they get on. Hey! <laughs>